I received some questions about the herbicide known as glyphosate that we briefly mentioned in our last video. Also known as Roundup, glyphosate is the most common herbicide used worldwide. The most common source of glyphosate residues found in your food can be found in sugar, corn, soy, and wheat products. While the industry asserts that it's minimally toxic to humans, other researchers disagree. The cancer research arm of the World Health Organization, known as the International Agency for Research on Cancer, controversially classified glyphosate as probably carcinogenic in humans. Research in the past five years indicates an indirect way in which glyphosate is affecting humans. Before I get to that, how does glyphosate work? Glyphosate disrupts a process called the shikimate pathway. This is how plants and other organisms synthesize aromatic amino acids. These are known as phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. By blocking the shikimate pathway, glyphosate is an effective herbicide at killing plants and weeds. Genetically modified Roundup Ready plants are immune to glyphosate, so in this way farmers can use glyphosate to kill weeds without damaging their crops. So glyphosate is generally thought of to be safe because humans and animals lack the shikimate pathway. So how is it that glyphosate is indirectly affecting us? What we have found is that the glyphosate is affecting our microbiome or all the bacteria that reside in our digestive system. This is because the bacteria do possess the shikimate pathway. Additionally, we rely on these bacteria to produce essential amino acids that we can't produce on our own. Animal studies on cattle and poultry also support findings that glyphosate is toxic to healthy gut bacteria. Curious enough, Monsanto even patented glyphosate as a potential antibiotic, but the development was never pursued. So what we have learned is, while glyphosate is not directly harmful to humans, it can affect our beneficial gut bacteria. Thus, the effect of glyphosate on animals may only be apparent after a considerable lapse in time. Short-term studies on animals show no apparent toxicity. But lifelong exposure studies reveal liver and kidney dysfunction with increased cancer risk and shorter lifespan. So with this information, what should we do? When possible, we should limit our exposure. You can do this by eating less corn, sugar, soy, and wheat products, since these are the sources where we come in contact with the most glyphosate residues. You can also buy organic when eating foods that are commonly contaminated with glyphosate. We know maintaining a healthy microbiome is extremely important, so we need to purposefully include as many probiotic foods and beverages into our diet as possible. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up so we can continue reaching more people and creating a healthier community together.